I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about one way to change your ex's mind about you. And by that, I mean about the breakup, about your situation, and about reconsidering repairing your relationship. You see, when you've been broken up with, when somebody's ended the relationship, our natural instinct is to immediately try and reconnect and for whatever reason it causes us to kind of beg plead and try and manipulate the person very rarely does somebody scathe that without making some mistakes so please just understand it's human nature to want to feel connected with our loved one and it's normal for us to try and do something to repair that connection now when you have attachment issues, or if you've had attachment traumas, which many of us have, obviously we are all at different levels of intensity and in what we struggled with or suffered with, but the more trauma you've had, the more likely you've been trying to overcompensate with unhealthy behaviors, begging, pleading, grand gestures, manipulating, because you're anxious and you feel kind of like you're gonna die without them. So at that point, the dynamic is no longer this chemistry with that person where you're feeling this attraction to them or they're feeling this attraction to you. It's no longer kind of mutual. It's kind of like you forcing your agenda on them and it really turns them off. You become like a used car salesman and if you've ever been in that environment, you know it's uncomfortable and you just want to get out of the situation, right? Think about if somebody's ever pressured you to buy something or do something, the more they do it, the more you're like, this is uncomfortable, I got to get out of this situation. I want to get out of here, I don't like this feeling. And that's unfortunately the feeling that we give our exes after they've ended the relationship in most cases. So you really have to work on getting emotionally centered which is not easy to do when somebody's just left you brokenhearted and you're in a lot of pain and all you want to do is make a bid to connect and repair things and they're telling you no and they're just getting meaner and colder because then it makes you feel more and more hopeless and then it just feels worse and all the symptoms that you have from it the anxiety the pain the headaches the stomach aches the diarrhea you name it I've talked about it all, right? And so if you're gonna get your ex back and you're gonna reattract them, you've got to get centered, okay? Now, that's not gonna be an easy task because many of us are dealing with attachment issues that are at the very root and the very core of the pain that we're having. And so what I'm trying to get you to see is a lot of the pain you're experiencing after your breakup is pain and trauma from your childhood. It's that pain that's been buried or hidden away in our unconscious for many, many years for most of you, and it's coming back out now. But that's how you felt when you were in pain in your childhood, believe it or not. And so this is why we're always trying to help you heal attachment issues. This is why I have the workbooks and the creative healing course especially because there's a lot of therapeutic activities in there that are trying to get to your unconscious to healing those things, right? The art therapy activities are many of them centered around your breakup and healing and processing those painful experiences that you have with the pain you've had and the, uh, from your childhood and the trauma from your childhood. And so 
when I created the course, I had looked and done a lot of research on how creativity really helps us. And there's nothing else out there like this where it's focused on healing from breakup. So that's why, you know, many of the art therapy activities will focus on like something regarding your ex. And, and then there's reflective questions to really get you to think about those things. Because, you know, as we always tell you guys, we really recommend no contact, no reaching out to your ex when they've ended the relationship. Cause this is one major opportunity for showing your ex that you are emotionally centered. See all those things that other coaches, you know, tell you to do handwritten letters, clean slate messages, good reminder texts. That's all weak behavior because that's showing I'm not centered. I can't handle this. I've got to reconnect with you. I can't respect your decision and allow you to deal with this or have this consequence. I'm trying to repair it with you. So some really toxic coaches will say, oh, you know, your ex is going to be with another guy in the, in the meantime. If you're not reaching out, don't let no contact happen. I, I can see the videos coming before my, my videos here and I'm just like, who is listening to this guy? And believe me, I've had a couple people that do those strategies and they're smacking their forehead saying, why did I listen to it? Because it's really toxic advice. And in many cases, you're going to wind up with the police called on you. You have to respect somebody and showing up at their house, uh, showing up at places that they're at is only going to make things worse. So I'm trying to get you to get to a healthy place where you are focusing on healing and growing and showing emotional strength and resiliency that you can handle it, that you don't need them because small little mistakes really add up, really hurt chances. Okay. And I know you're hurting. I'm not trying to beat you up here, but you've got to get your behavior under control. Now we tell you guys often that kind of less is more on social media after a breakup. So many of you guys are a complete disaster on social media. So I'm going to give you some real strategies here of what not to do. Okay. Because you're hurting your chances. Any of the drama that you're posting is going to turn your ex off. If you're trying to guilt them, if you're trying to manipulate them, if you're presenting these things on your posts, that look like you're emotionally unstable, it's going to turn them off and rightfully so. Because if you were on the other end of it, you'd be turned off too. I can promise you. So if you're posting things like complaints about lopsided relationships, they know it's about them. It's a dig at them. I know you guys are posting things like this about Oh, you were with a partner that wasn't making an effort, blah, 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 and all these complaints. But meanwhile, you want to be with that person, right? And yet you're complaining about them and they know that it's about them. If you're posting videos about how you are the prize, okay? And I see these, I see them on my own Instagram. If you're posting these things, it's going to turn your ex off because if you really believe that, why would you be posting it? If you keep that to yourself and you truly believe that for yourself, that's about you. But if you're posting it, it's because you're trying to get attention. Okay. It's going to turn them off. If you're posting quotes about letting your ex lose you, they're going to see it. It's going to get back to them in some way, shape or form. Friends or family, a fake account, whatever. Stop this, please. It's only going to turn your ex off. If you're posting yourself every day at the gym and there's a hundred videos of you at the gym working out, chances are you're doing it for them. If you weren't doing it when you were in the relationship and now all of a sudden you're doing it, then it's about trying to get their attention and they're going to see through it. They're not going to tell you they see through it, but believe me, they do. I'm telling you for your own good, they're going to see through it. If you're deliberately posting pictures of you that you know that they liked 
and then you hide it. And then you make it public again. And then you hide it. And then you bring out another one that you know that they like. And then you hide it. They know it's for them. It's not going to reattract them. It's going to make them think that you're insecure and you're, you know, unstable and that you're uncentered. And all of these little things are going to make them feel uncomfortable. It's not going to make them long for you more. Even though it's an attractive picture of you that you know they liked, it doesn't make them think, oh, wow, I really miss them. It's like, okay, they've taken that picture down and posted it three times now in the last month. And they don't like that because it just, it doesn't sit well with them that it looks like you're doing well. We're trying to show them that you're doing well, okay? If you're posting songs that you know are going to try and hurt them with lyrics that are about them, you know what I'm getting at here. These things are all showing that you're not okay. I don't want you to present that you're not doing well. I want them to see that you are doing well. And I'd much rather you be posting less than posting any of these things. Because I've often seen drama come out of these posts and things like this. Now, if you're not in a good place, you might feel like drama and a fight and an argument is good because I feel that connection with them. But that's about some unhealthy attachment issues going on with you that are activating and you're trying to re-engage with them because maybe on some level it's less painful than not hearing from them. And I get it, but it's not going to help your chances. Okay? What's going to help your chances is to truly focus on the growth, healing these attachment issues, and then presenting like you're doing okay. Not that you don't care about them or anything like that, just that you're doing okay. Because we want to show confidence. And all of these behaviors that I'm listing here are not showing confidence, they're showing insecurities. Posting drama, posting I'm not gonna chase you posts, uh, posts about lopsided relationships, complaints about your exes, uh, posting about how you're the prize, uh, quotes, too many gym posts. All of these things are just going to make your ex feel like you're not doing well. So stay focused on the personal growth. Look into therapy in your area. Get a coaching with us. Do the workbooks 30 minutes a day. Review those answers. If you're doing the creative healing course, do those art therapy activities. Process. It's really important to healing and to getting to a good place. Don't do it for them. Do it for yourself. Initially, if you have to do it for them, okay. But ideally, you really want to do it for yourself and for your own happiness and your own relationships with yourself and with whoever you're with in the future, okay? Now, please understand, I'm not trying to beat you up here. I'm trying to guide you, and I saw a lot of mistakes recently online on Instagram, and so I was like, I better get out there and squash some of these mistakes because I want you guys to have the best chance to reattract your ex. And if that's not going to happen for whatever reason, I still want you to understand what some of this unhealthy behavior looks like, okay? So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If, of course, if you want to get my help personally, you could do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And you can find my creative healing course and my workbooks there. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.